Hey, what's up everybody? Justin Meyer is back here with another video for y'all. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you my choices and what I would choose if I were to build a pedal board today with reissue options. So instead of having to get the real expensive, very collectible, very sought after pedals, I mean, a lot of the stuff I've had for years, so I, I was able to get in at the right time um, before things really just started getting crazy price-wise on some of this stuff. But I'm gonna detail all the pedals that I use here on my main pedal board, and I'm gonna give you guys what I would choose if I were looking to build a pedal board in today's day and age. And um, you know, really just choose from what's readily available and not have to spend a fortune on all these collectible pedals that I have here on this pedal board. But before I go on with this video, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video and drop a comment down below with what you guys think. I absolutely love hearing from y'all. And also, I'm so excited to announce my one-on-one -on -one private Zoom lessons. These lessons are absolutely amazing and I'm teaching people around the world. And what's so cool about these lessons is that you get a recorded copy of the actual lesson itself. So at the very end of the lesson, I send you a separate email with the full video and audio to our lesson. So you could always go back and learn from it. I really give a lot of concepts in these lessons and they're just amazing lessons. So be sure to hit me up at jkm4231 at gmail.com. It's gonna be linked down below in the description box for some more information on that. And if you'd like to support the channel, all of the gear that I'm going to be mentioning in today's video is actually going to be available through Sweetwater Music, folks. Check out the link down below in the description box. It's a really nice way. I'm really happy to announce this partnership with Sweetwater Music, and um, they did a custom page for me, and it just came out amazing. I, I can't say enough good things about Sweetwater. They are the best retailer, in my opinion, for music gear. Um, there is nobody better, man. They are just amazing, incredible service. And uh, I, I've dealt with them. I've spent a lot of money with them over the years and uh, really happy to uh, announce my partnership with them here on YouTube. So go and check out that, uh, that link that's linked down below in the description box if you'd like to make a purchase on any of these pedals that I'm gonna be mentioning here in today's video. And also I have a Venmo and PayPal tip jar. Any and all support is really appreciated. Thank you all. So in today's video, I'm gonna be referencing my main pedal board that I use as a professional musician. I use this thing for gigs, I use it for sessions, I use it for absolutely everything I do. All the videos here on YouTube, I do everything with this pedal board. There is nothing you cannot get done with this pedal board. It will work, it's tried and true. I use it here in Nashville as my main pedal board all the time, constantly for my work. And uh, if you cannot get a good tone out of this pedal board, I just don't know what else to say. So we're gonna go ahead and switch the camera over here so that y'all can see the exact pedal board and what I all have on this pedal board. And I'm going to give you guys what reissue pedals that I would choose if I were looking to just build a pedal board today. All right, folks, so here's a shot of my pedal board here. So this is mounted on a Pedal Train Classic One pedal board. I absolutely love these things, man. They're just indestructible and they just hold up. I've had this pedal board for years, man, and it's just, it holds up, it's just awesome. So first and foremost, here is a Pedal Train Classic one. This is what all these pedals are mounted to. And then the first pedal that I have here is this Peterson Strobo Stomp tuner. Now this pedal here, it's absolutely my favorite tuner, hands down. It's dead on, it's so accurate. It's just the best tuner in my opinion, absolutely hands down. This is the Peterson Strobo Stomp HD which they have available over at Sweetwater Music that's readily available, you could find them anywhere. Um, it is a strobe tuner, so it's something that you'd have to get used to, but with time and you keep using it, and man, you will really hear how much more in tune that the guitar is and the instrument is by using these, and um, you really just get used to those stro the strobe tuning. It's just a very easy to read, very easy to understand. It just takes a little bit to understand it, whereas like a Boss TU-3, you know, it just lights up green where it's really simple, but I would say that those are not as accurate as the Peterson tuner. So just in my opinion, but there's that pedal. So that's where the guitar plugs up into. Then I have a vintage, this is from the 70s, a Ross compressor. Now they've made a reissue of this exact compressor. I like to use a compressor for whenever I'm playing with my fingers or if I'm playing clean. Um, it just really helps even out everything and brings up the level, especially when you're playing cleaner with your fingers. It really helps to have a compressor on and that these Ross compressors are just awesome. So check out the reissue that they have available at Sweetwater as well. 
Then I have here a 70s MXR Strip Phase 90. Now these are really collectible and, and valuable, but honestly, if you were to get the Block Logo MXR Phase 90, I believe they're like 100 bucks on Sweetwater. Um, just the regular Block Logo MXR Phase 90. So the Block lo Logo meaning that the MXR logo would just be within like a block basically. Just get that one, and that one is absolutely hands down the best reissue phase that I have tried that I've heard for sure. Um, you don't need to get the exact re you know recreation of the script uh, logo. It's it's not the same um, even compared to the vintage one. So just get the block logo one. It's cheaper and it sounds way better. So check that out. The MXR block logo phase ninety. That's what I would use on that. Then we go on over to our next pedal here. This is the version one exotic effects RC booster. Now this pedal here, they have reissued the exact version of it. Now they have a second version where there's a second gain boost, but don't get that one, just get this one. This is all you need. Just one gain boost here and it's really nice because I like to run this pedal pre-drive because I'm able to cut out some of the low end, add some top end, and just add a little bit of gain to my overall drive tone, which is just really nice. And these exotic RC boosts, man, they're just amazing. So check that out. They've reissued the exact version that I have here, and it sounds great. Now on to the next pedal here. Here is a Nobles Ram ODR1. It's the same as the original, just with the Ram logo. Now, if you were to get the reissue Nobles, man, those sound good, yes, they're not exactly the same as the original, but man, come on, you cannot beat the price. They're like 80 bucks or to $120. I mean, if you get the Nobles Mini or the full-size ODR, you cannot beat the price on those. They just sound amazing, man. And the whole idea with the gain as far as how I play as a guitar player and the overdrives that I use and what I select for pedals and stuff is I like to elevate the level of gain that I have going on. So the Nobles is kind of something that I use like 90% of the time. And then I start off there as my bass tone, and then I elevate the amount of gain by clicking on the RC boost. And then you'll see here that I have a Boss GE7 that I run post the drive, which just helps cut the guitar in the mix. It really gets the mid range to jump out for solos. And it just really with the Nobles and the RC boost, man, it's all the gain that you would want. It's plenty of gain. So with these two together, it's really nice because you get the RC boost that cuts out the low end and boosts some high end and boosts some gain, where sometimes I feel like, depending on the night, man, like I just need a little bit more gain under the fingers for whatever reason. So that's where the RC boost is really nice. And it also serves as like a little EQ pre the Nobles ODR. Now with the Nobles ODR, man, they're very dark sounding and uh, they're, they can be for sure. And they're definitely a lower gain. So the RC boost just pairs so well with the Ram Nobles or the Nobles ODR one in general. It's just a really great combination. So there's that there. Then I have here this Analog Man King of Tone. Now with this pedal, what I'm trying to do with this is that it's a very mid rangey higher gain for sure. Um, because you got the two sides there, whereas the Nobles is very, there's a lot more low end, um, it's way lighter gain. Um, so basically the whole idea with the gain pedals on my pedal board is I like to have two different gain structures that are completely different. So depending on what I'm going for, if I want something that's a lower gain thing, that's more natural, more of a um, you know low end heavy kind of drive, then I have my Nobles where if I want the mid-rangey kind of martial-y kind of thing, then I go over to the Analog Man King of Tone for that, and I turn off the Nobles. So now, I would never stack these two drives together. What I would do is I would then, again, use the King of Tone now as my main drive while leaving the Nobles off, and then I would elevate the gain with the RC Boost and the GE7 there. So there's that. Now, what, what I would recommend reissue-wise for the King of Tone is maybe take a look at maybe like the Friedman stuff. Um, they make like Marshall in a box pedals. Um, you know, they're really high gain and they're just totally different. I mean, even with something like that, you may not even want to actually boost a pedal like that because there's already so much gain on tap. But, um, you know, there's the Friedman thing. Um, 
The Bogner Blue is, as well would be a solid choice if you're looking for that Marshall in a box kind of thing. Um, so there's that there. And then come out of there into the Boss GE7, which every guitar player should have one of these. It's absolutely essential to every guitar player's pedal board. It's a Boss EQ. Now I run this post drive where I can cut for leads and really jump out in a mix with my solos. So you can see there that I've boosted the 800 and the 1.6K bands. And that's just basically extra mid-range. So when I go in for my solo, I kick that on. And man, your guitar will jump out of a mix. Everybody will be able to hear your solo with this pedal. So really nice there. Now this pedal actually goes to a post insert on my interface where that's why you, that's why you were seeing um, pedals that were outside of the pedal board there. So I have a volume pedal actually routed um, in line after this GE7. I have the Micropog going before the pedal board, but um, yeah, that's basically all that that was there. But then we come back from that post insert into the Strymon Flint. This is another pedal that every guitar player should have is the Strymon Flint. I think it is absolutely hands down the best reverb tremolo pedal available on the market. It just sounds awesome, man. So everybody should have one of these. Really sounds good. So then we come stereo out of there into this JHV3 modded M9 from Line 6 FX. Now they make a Line 6 HX FX that is the new modern up-to-date version of the M9. This one is actually modified by JHV3. But just get the HX effects, man. Those things sound so good. And again, it's a pedal that every guitar player should have. You could reconfigure that thing to do whatever you want, whatever effect you want, man. And it sounds so good. No matter what amp you're running with that thing, you could accommodate the setup by running effects loops or um, reprogramming the effects. I mean, the thing is so in depth. And for the money, you cannot beat that pedal, man. They sound so good. And it's just awesome with these because you can reconfigure them however you want and you don't have to peel off pedals off your pedal board when it's like, oh man, I'd like to get a vibrato effect or a rotary effect or whatever. All of those effects are all just built into this box here. So with the HX effects, it's as simple as just easily turning a knob and programming up whatever that you want. And the modulation effects, the delays, man, oh man, do they sound good, man. They're just awesome. So that is the entire pedal board there, and that's what I would recommend to folks out there um, if I was looking to get a pedal board in today's day and age with uh, reissue effects. So let me know what you guys think. You know, once again, I love hearing from y'all, and uh, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to check out my one-on-one -on -one Zoom lessons. Check out my Sweetwater affiliate link, and check out my PayPal and Venmo tip jar if you feel like you got something out of this. I'd really appreciate any and all support, and um, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I really appreciate it. We'll see you all next time. Take care.